Arcadian Vanguard presents The Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023. Good morning. I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin today with AEW All In News. The company's debut in the United Kingdom has already sold more tickets than any event in AEW history, with approximately 35,000 Wembley Stadium tickets cleared during yesterday's first day of pre-sale, according to a report yesterday afternoon from Forbes. Sales so far have already eclipsed the previous AEW record of 20,177 tickets distributed for the initial Grand Slam edition of Dynamite at Arthur Ashe Stadium in September 2021. Although it has not been officially confirmed whether AEW is looking for a full sellout of the 90,000-seat capacity stadium, as opposed to only making certain sections available and blocking off others, Ticketmaster tweeted a full-capacity seating chart for All In in late April, a tweet which was later deleted. AEW All In is scheduled to take place August 27th. The only previous pro wrestling event to be held at London's Wembley Stadium was the WWF SummerSlam 92, which sold 79,127 tickets and had a total attendance of 80,355, including complimentary tickets and employees. In ratings news, last Friday's draft edition of WWE SmackDown drew a total audience of 2.473 million viewers to Fox, an increase of nearly 14% from the previous week's 2.175 million, according to Show Buzz Daily, and the largest total audience since the January 27th episode. The rating in the key 18 to 49 year old demographic was 0.67, representing 874,000 viewers, and an increase of 24% from the previous week's 0.50 key demo rating, according to Russell Nomics. The episode came in first place for the evening in the key demographic on network TV, up from second place for the previous week's episode. Last Monday's draft edition of Raw drew an audience of 1.778 million to USA Network, down 2% from last week's 1.815 million, according to Show Buzz Daily. In the hourly breakdown, Hour 1 drew 1.841 million, rising to 1.873 million in Hour 2, and then dropping to 1.620 million for the last hour, marking a loss of 253,000 viewers between Hours 2 and 3, and a cumulative loss of 221,000 over the course of the show. The rating in the key demographic was 0.54, representing 704,000 viewers, and down from the previous week's 0.56 key demo rating, according to Russell Nomics. The episode ranked fifth for the evening in the key demo on cable TV, down from the number four position the week before. NXT was broadcast on the USA Network last night from the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. NXT Women's Tag Team Champions Alba Fire and Isla Dawn defeated Katana Chance and Caden Carter to retain the title. What's on the mind of the champions now? Oh, no! But the oh, yes! Just delivered that boys and thick! Into the cover goes Dawn! Carter's been taken out! The match was a send-off for both teams, which were drafted to the WWE main roster. Also drafted to the main roster is Indy Hartwell, who relinquished her NXT Women's Championship in the final segment of the show. It was announced that a tournament would be held to crown a new champion, culminating at NXT Battleground on May 28th. Hartwell injured her ankle during last week's Spring Breaking episode of NXT. In the opening match, Wes Lee retained the NXT North American Championship, defeating Drew Gulak. JC Jane was accidentally busted open on the ring steps during her victory over former Toxic Attraction partner Gigi Dolan. After the match, Jane continued to beat Dolan down until officials broke up the attack. In other results, Axiom defeated Scripps, after which the latter was revealed as the former Reggie, Dragon Lee beat J.D. McDonough, and Joe Gacy defeated Joe Coffey to earn the dyad in NXT Tag Team title shot. 
In more news related to the WWE draft, the ring announcers for Raw and SmackDown have switched places in the wake of the draft, with Samantha Irvin moving to Raw and Mike Rome going to SmackDown. The switch was officially confirmed on WWE's website. Irvin is engaged to Ricochet, who was also drafted to Raw, along with his tag team partner, Braun Strowman. In independent wrestling news, Defy and Progress have announced a major co-promoted event to take place on the same date and in the same city as AEW and New Japan's Forbidden Door pay-per-view event. The event is scheduled to take place on Sunday, June 25th at the Rec Room in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Forbidden Door is scheduled to take place later the same day at Scotiabank Arena, less than a half a mile away. No talent nor matches were announced. The Defy promotion is based out of Seattle, Washington, while Progress is based out of London, England. With some health-related news, here's the Wrestling News' Lou Kippelman. The National Wrestling Alliance's Black G's, real name Darnell Cottrell, was recently diagnosed with multiple myeloma, a form of blood cancer. The news was made public in a GoFundMe account set up for Cottrell, which had raised $6,000 out of a $15,000 goal as of yesterday. Richard Holiday has addressed his cancer remission and recent appearance for Beyond Wrestling in an exclusive statement made to the Wrestling News. Said Holiday, quote, Being in the ring at Beyond Wrestling has given me immeasurable inspiration to get back to do this again. The outreach has been beautiful. My goal now is to be 100% ready to step in the ring for a match. In terms of where that may be and for who, I'm not sure. For the first time in five years, I have options. End quote. Holiday participated in an in-ring angle at Beyond Wrestling's Beyond 30 event in Worcester, Massachusetts last Sunday, which was streamed on independentwrestling.tv. The former MLW talent took a break from pro wrestling in June 2022 after being diagnosed with stage 4 Hodgkin's lymphoma. He shared the news of his cancer remission during his Worcester appearance. For the Wrestling News, I'm Lou Kippelman. And we close our program with a correction from Monday's newscast, during which I mistakenly noted that beginning this fall, National Hockey League coverage leaves Turner Broadcasting for ESPN and Fox Sports. As several listeners pointed out, that is inaccurate, as in April of 2021, the NHL reached a seven-year deal totaling over a billion dollars with Turner and ESPN. I apologize for the error. And before we leave you today, We'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The wrestling news is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the wrestling newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.